Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to That Triathlon Show, the podcast presented by scientifictriathlon.com. I'm your host, Michael, and this is Beginner Tip 20, where I'll talk about running cadence. Having a high enough running cadence is important for a couple of big reasons. And uh, the first one is that having a high running cadence or stride rate, steps per minute, whatever you want to call it, is that it avoids overstriding. I don't really care about whether you hit the ground with a forefoot strike, a midfoot strike or a heel strike, point in case, meb heel strikes. But landing with your foot right underneath your hip, your center of mass, mass, that is important. It uh, reduces the risk of injuries uh, quite significantly. For example, there was a research paper that was called Effects of Step Rate Manipulation on Joint Mechanics During Running. And uh, they found that by... uh, by increasing the, your cadence by 5 to 10%, you can greatly, greatly reduce the amount of impact forces that go through both your knee and your hip joints, for example. And overstriding is also a bit like running with your brakes on. Uh, so so you, you can just simply think about it. Like if you have your leg go out in front of you and you land, then a force from the ground is going to come back through the leg and, and it will basically stop you from using the momentum to go forward as quickly as you could otherwise have. So both for in terms of avoiding injury and going faster, you want to avoid overstriding and having a high enough cadence is key to that. You simply cannot overstride if your cadence is high enough. enough. And as I said, 5 to 10% uh, increase in cadence for most runners uh, seems to be achievable and beneficial, both for performance and for reduction of injury risk uh, standpoints. So uh, let's go to the second reason. It's related to the performance that I already mentioned through overstriding. But uh, another factor that comes into how fast you run, how good you perform on the run, is that your running economy can improve with a higher cadence, since you'll get some free speed by bouncing back off the ground. When your cadence is high enough, you'll get that what's called elastic recoil. So uh, your ground reaction forces that uh, propel you forward, keep your momentum up without you having to do any extra work for it. So that improves your running economy, which essentially means that for the same amount of effort, you can go slightly faster when your cadence is higher. So that's about it for the performance and or, or the reasons that you want to maybe increase your cadence a bit. And to be clear, when I talk about different numbers of cadence, I'm talking steps per minute. So if you run at a cadence of 180, for example, it means you take 180 steps per minute, 90 with your left foot and 90 with your right foot. In other words, you take three steps per second at that cadence. 180 is often referred to as some something that is uh, like a magical target almost that anybody should strive to be at but it is not as simple as that definitely not this number comes from observations and studies at races and uh, race pace running and whether whether it's a marathon or a 1500 meter race all elite runners seem to have at least 180 uh, as their cadence at race pace in these different at these dif- distances but up to as high as 210 for 1500 meter runners so so 180 is like the the lowest possible race pace for for an elite runner it seems but this does not mean that they have that high cadences at a normal easy jogging speed so so I dig, dug down in my own coaching data from runners or triathletes that I coach and their normal endurance runs to have a look at what typical cadences do my athletes have at an endurance pace, a zone 2 pace. And for beginners, it seemed to be in the 150 to 172 range, uh, with most of them actually being above 160 or one, around 160 to 166 or so. Intermediates were in the 162 to 172 range, with most maybe being around that 166 to 170 range. And the advanced athletes were all at 170 or more, even at their normal endurance runs. 
This is, of course, completely anecdotal because I want these beginner tips to be practical and I use the other episodes for the sciencey stuff. But it goes to show a bit that the more advanced runners have higher cadences uh, at a similar effort. Although I have, and I have to say that the difference between beginners and intermediate athletes in my team of athletes, at least, isn't that huge. It really only comes from one or two outliers in the beginner, uh, beginner segment of the athletes more than anything. Personally, just to share my data, I'm always in the, I'm quite a high cadence runner. So I'm in the 175, 177 range, even for my super slow recovery runs. My endurance runs are usually 178 to 182 or so. And my race pace is 190 plus steps per minute. And this is important because cadence depends on speed, as I already alluded to. Uh, So what you run in your endurance run is not the same as what you'll run as your 10k race pace when we're talking cadence. When you run faster, of course, your cadence will be be higher. And uh, it also depends on other factors like your height, your hip mobility, your level of general fitness, to to name a few. So there is no one magic number. But the bottom line here is that almost any recreational triathlete or runner, especially beginners, can benefit both performance-wise and injury prevention-wise from increasing cadence compared to your current cadence. So here are your action steps. So first, you need to find your normal running cadence. And you can do that by just uh, setting a time, like 20 seconds, and run that 20-second segment and count all of your steps, multiply by three, and that's your cadence in steps per minute. So let's say that you count uh, 58 steps for the 20 second second segment then you would have a cadence of 58 times 3 and that would be 174 i believe you can correct me if i'm wrong when you find your current normal cadence unless you are at a normal endurance so in two pace already at 170 or above then i highly recommend practicing cadence to try to increase it to get there to 170 or more uh, up to as high as 5 to 10 percent more than your current natural cadence but uh, i do recommend keeping this increase gradual so maybe increase your cadence by two to three steps per minute every two to three weeks or so so a few tips finally on how to practice and increase your cadence First, you can use a metronome either as an app on your phone or even you can use on Garmin watches at least. They have a metronome function that you can use. So so use the metronome while running, either continuous runs or you can do cadence intervals, which I actually recommend doing first. So let's say that your current cadence is 160 and you want to now increase it to 163 over the next two weeks. Then you would set your, your metronome to 163 and uh, you would try to match the beep of the metronome when running. And uh, you would do that for maybe one minute and then uh, stop the metronome, run normally for one minute, and then go one minute with the metronome again. And try to ease into, by using these sorts of cadence intervals, ease into your new cadence. Uh, Second, and of course, you would then increase the proportion of the workout that is at the higher cadence and uh, and decrease the proportion of the workout that is at your current natural cadence. The second tip for practicing cadence is to practice on the treadmill. So that allows you to maintain a constant speed. So you wouldn't change the speed of the ca- treadmill, but you would then try to, again, starting by using intervals, do intervals of significantly or a bit higher cadence than your natural cadence and then maybe go back to your normal but then again during an interval do a higher cadence and use that sort of training to practice and finally fast running and uh, intervals in general they can also be used to improve cadence just by including them especially if that's not something that you do at the moment because running fast that uh, will as i said make you use a higher cadence which may over time transfer to some extent to your easier running. Uh, 
But uh, so this is useful, but it's not. You should not let this be the only type of cadence training that you're doing because that would not be uh, be enough simply to to increase your natural cadence. So to sum up what we talked about today, cadence is important, and increasing cadence can improve your running performance and reduce risk of injury, in particular knee and hip injuries. You can usually, if you're like most athletes, safely increase your cadence by 5 to 10% uh, compared to your current natural cadence, and you should do that gradually over time. And the way to increase your cadence would be to first find out where you are, then set goals and intermediate goals, like for example, increasing by three steps per minute uh, over the next two weeks, and then go on like that until you have hit your ultimate target. And you would practice cadence by doing cadence intervals and slowly transition them into continuous runs at that higher cadence. You would use a metronome app or your metronome functionality on your Garmin or a treadmill to do those intervals and also fast running or fast intervals in general to make it easier to maintain a high stride rate. I hope that you enjoyed this beginner tip. I'm recording it from uh, a great training camp in the Algarve in southern Portugal. I am very allergic, so my voice is a bit uh, cracked, and it will be for some of the other episodes as well. It's uh, an allergy that I can't seem to shake. It's a very bad year. I haven't had allergies like this in years, but uh, now it's hit me like crazy, and this is the second bout of allergies that I have, and both of these bouts have gone on for a long time, so I really hope that that I'll get rid of it soon. But training is going well, no injuries, and we've had some amazing cycling here in the Algarve on the training camp. If you're interested in uh, training plans or even in uh, coaching, check out my website, scientifictriathlon.com, where you can find all the information about uh, those uh, products and services. And you can, of course, email me if you need more info or if you have feedback or suggestions for future beginner tips. My email is michael at scientifictriathlon.com and michael is spelled with a K. Thank you, as always, for listening. Keep training smart and keep loving triathlon.